So can you feel it? Summer is right around the corner. And if you're anything like me, the countdown to summer break has started. With that in mind, this is a perfect time to switch things up a bit to keep students engaged and to finish the school year strong. So today, teachers, I come prepared to share with you one of my favorite addition computation games. But before I get into the meat of it all, I want to welcome you to my channel. For those of you new, I'm Mrs. O, here to support my parents, students, and teachers with everything math-related, ed tech tips, and educational resources. So if that sounds like something you may be interested in, make sure to stay connected by subscribing down below. Now, let's get into it. Close to 100 is one of my go-to center activities that students just enjoy playing. And some of you may be familiar with the partner game series, which is similar to this game. However, I made a few tweaks to better meet the needs of my students. So if you're looking for a fun interactive game where students can work independently in pairs or in groups of three or four to practice their addition and subtraction computation, build up their number sense and mental math strategies, can also help reinforce place value understanding, rounding, estimation, and so much more, all while having fun and learning at the same time. So whether you're teaching virtually, face-to-face, -face, or simultaneously, this game can be easily adapted for any setting. However, for the purpose of this video, I will be showing you how to play Close to 100 virtually. Here, Close to 100 is set up on Whiteboard Chat. If you're not sure about how to use Whiteboard Chat, please check the description box below where you'll be able to find links to videos detailing how to use this free whiteboard. Here to the left is the recording sheet, the task card, along with an anchor chart. When assigning this as an activity for students to work on independently, the challenge would be for students to get as close to 100 as possible. A regular deck of playing cards can be used for this game. However, in the beginning, I prefer assigning task cards similar to this one, where they're to select four out of the five digits to make two sets of two-digit numbers. Keeping in mind that when those numbers are combined, the goal is to have them as close to 100 as possible. So let's say a student decides to go with four, three, one, and six to create numbers and makes 43 and 16, with the sum being 59. Now, hopefully students will be able to determine before reaching this point that putting the four and the one in the tens place would not get them to a sum that is closest to 100. This is where an understanding of place value and number sense can be developed. Pointing students' attention to the tens place you want to help them to think of numbers that could easily make a fast 10. For instance, we have 1 and 9, 2 and 8, 3 and 7, 4 and 6, and so on. Looking at the four numbers, we know that 6 and 4 will definitely make a fast 10, and being that they're in the tens place, that 6 tens plus 4 tens gives us 10 tens, which is the same thing as 100. However, Students are then reminded that the digits in the ones place have a direct effect if regrouping is involved on the tens place. So instead of putting the four in the tens place, a student might determine to put the three in its place. Six tens plus three tens is nine tens, which gives us 90. And then they can go ahead and fill in the ones place with the other two digits, giving us a sum of 95. Now the next part requires that students find the difference between 100 and 95. This is when I would introduce the students the add-on strategy because most students find it a challenge to subtract numbers that include a series of zeros. So instead, with the add-on strategy, and the anchor chart is available for them right there as a reminder, they start with the sum and then they add on beginning with ones and then tens until they get to 100. And since we're at 95, Add on ones, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Okay, so zero tens are needed since we're at 100. And so the difference between 95 and 100 is five. So that's pretty close to 100. Trying another example, we're going to be using task card number seven. Again, students want to give attention to the tens place, determining which digits will get them closest to 100. So thinking in terms of 10, you have a 9, a 1, 3, 7, and 8. Again, it's easy to put together the 9 and 1 and put that in the tens place. However, we've already learned in the other example that that's going to give us 10 tens, and we don't want to go way over. Okay, the goal is to get as close to 100, and you can also stipulate that as a rule, get as close to 100 without going over. So in this case, instead of 
one and nine, which is an obvious fast 10, maybe they want to go down one and go with eight and one in the tens place, giving us nine tens, which is the same thing as 90. Now giving attention to the ones place, students have to determine, well, what combinations can they put together that won't uh, bump their tens place too far off from 100 as well. So for instance, if they were to put the nine and three together, nine and three gives us 12. So that would end up being 102. Now, even though that's not far over 100, the point is students can start thinking about what's the better option. And this is where that mental math reasoning and mental math thinking comes into play. So students may determine that three and seven will be best. Adding that up, regrouping, get exactly 100. With that, not only would the student get close to 100, but would reach exactly 100. And that's the type of thinking that we want them to attain to, improving their performance with each play. Here is one more example of a flashcard option, and I've added a little twist. As you can see, this card has a wild card option. So whenever students select the task card with this wild card, he or she can decide to make it any single digit number of their choosing. This adds another level of thinking and excitement to the game. With so many skills wrapped up into this one game, I am confident that your students will be continually challenged. So if you're interested in giving it a try, check the description box down below for links. But that's not all. As I stated in the beginning, this is only how I introduce the game. However, once students become more skilled, you can take it up a notch. So look out for my next video. I will detail just how to do it. As always, thank you for watching. To continue to support my channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, take care.